Hey teacher fam, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to share with you a way to make your Bitmoji classroom into a discussion board in Canvas. And it's a compelling way to engage students and to open them up to critical thinking and spark imagination. So right now in front of me, you have a Google slide with my Bitmojis and we have some thought bubbles. So these thought bubbles are from Canva. I'm gonna show you how to get those. And the Bitmojis obviously are from the Bitmoji app using the Chrome extension. And we're gonna place these onto a Google slide where the background helps accent or accentuate or enhance the discussion board topic. And then I'm gonna show you how to put all that into a Canvas discussion board. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna to go to my class called Because We're Teachers, and I'm going to open up a discussion. Now I click the Discussions tab, I click Plus Discussion, and here I have a brand new discussion board. And I'm gonna call this American Dream Discussion. You can be more creative if you like. Um, I'm having my students do some, actually this is my wife's class. I'm having, uh, I'm using her example of having her students read about the American Dream. And so we could see this slide here. It has one character, this is Alatisha, sitting on her crate in Times Square, saying, what is the American dream? My wife's Bitmoji is saying, the American dream is not about material possessions or money. And then I have another quote. Now these are thoughts from the reading, and we're basically presenting different points of views, and we're associating them using cartoon bubbles over the Bitmoji's heads to help students see a social situation where people are discussing and having different points of view. Then we'll create a discussion prompt where it says, discuss one of these points of view, adopt it or defend it. All right, so it's very easy to do. What we're gonna do is go over to Canva and I'm gonna show you, um, we're just gonna do a blank um, post, Instagram post. Uh, actually, I want, um, let's not do an Instagram post. Let's do something that's a, presentation is perfect. All right, this is going to be the shape of the slide. And we're going to go over here to elements and we're going to say um, cartoon bubble. Now I see a variety of ones here. Uh, I like these colored ones. They have a little bit of character. I could use that one. Notice the little crown icon. That means it's premium or it costs money. Uh, so I'm going to look for one that doesn't have any money. Uh, associated with it, um, thought bubble. All right, here's a, here's a nice one, free. All right, I'm gonna use this colored thought bubble here. It's kind of cute. The blue um, really kind of pops, draws my attention. I could recolor it anything to match my diagram or match the color of my setting. I kind of like this teal. I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna say download that as a PNG and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that file over to remove.bg and I'm gonna upload it, choosing that, and it's gonna remove the background, so I'm just gonna get my, my kind of teal or aqua thought bubble. And so I'm gonna just duplicate this slide and show you how easy it is to do. If I remove these right here, uh, I just drop that on, and here is Alatisha's. Now you notice my wife, the thought bubble faces her, but I'm going to, all right, I'm gonna click on this thought bubble, drag it up into position for my wife right here. And then I'm gonna hold the option key and then click and drag. I'm gonna make a copy and I'm gonna to go to format options. And what I wanna do is just rotate it or flip it. So I'm gonna flip it so it faces Alatisha, her bitmoji there. Um, and then I'm gonna put it right there and kind of resizing these so they fit the uh, the diagram. All right, so now we have our um, thought bubbles. I'm gonna click and drag while holding the option key and I'm gonna put this one over here. I'm gonna flip it so that it fits my, my Bitmoji. All right, so now we have the background. Now let's say the background wasn't about the American dream. It was about something about life in the country or the city. You could highlight that background uh, by or you can change that background by going to background Google image search and you'd say uh, farm or let's say hills so let's say our, our uh, bitmojis are having a discussion out in the hills 
you could do something like that. So you could change the background to situate it. Let's say it was about agrarian culture and farm life going away. The Bitmojis could be in that environment. But right now, I'm just going to use the American Dream. I actually don't like the city, the Times Square that I did the first time uh, because it was too busy. So I'm just going to look for something that's a little more subtle so the attention goes onto my Bitmoji characters. So I'm going to say um, city. Uh, this one's pretty good. It looks a little less um, busy. That's nice. Okay, this is great. I love it. And actually, there's some aqua in there, some teal that pulls from um, these cartoon bubbles. And so I'm just going to take the quotes that I want my characters to say, and uh, I'm going to kind of cut and paste them uh, into there. So what is the American dream? Now, the first time I put the text into the... Um, I put the text into the thought bubble on Canva. This time, I'm just gonna put a text box on top of that on the Google slide. And I'm gonna have uh, now Letitia's Bitmoji say, what is the American dream? I feel like the Canva fonts are a little more robust and interesting and graphically, they're more sophisticated than the Google fonts. But there's no, um, like if you want script, you could do that, it's a little bit hard to read perhaps. Uh, but what is the American dream? And then um, I'm going to take this uh, quote up here from my wife saying the American dream is not about material possessions or money. And again, I'm just altering the text in the text box. The uh, American dream is not about material possessions or money. And we can make that bigger, make it fill uh, more of the space there. I'm going to bring this in here, this text box, and reshape it so it fits the cartoon bubble a little bit better. Um, there's probably different ways you can um, enhance this graphically so that the words pop a little bit more. The lighter the, the color, um, if you want to make that, that image a little bit different color, lighter, let's say. Uh, if I want to change the brightness, you can see that the text will pop a little bit more more contrast so i'm gonna do that and then i have a quote over here for my third character uh, but i'm just gonna leave it blank so right now i'm going to delete this initial slide i'm going to go file publish to the web and don't forget we've already created our discussion board here so um, i am going to go to the html editor and i'm going to paste in the slide right there now if i just hit save you'll see the slide embedded um, but that's not it. That's, that doesn't make sense. That's not enough of a story to, um, to tell our students what to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a graphic banner to help separate our slide deck from the instructions. And I'm going to, for that, I'm going to go to my Canvas cheat code. Over here, because we're, uh, because we're teachers, Canvas code copy. You can get this. I'll put a link underneath. Um, and I'm going to use the discussion banner right here, copy that, and I'm going to put it underneath. And then I'm actually going to color code this. You'll see this background color right here is the, um, the color of the banner, which if I hit uh, the HTML button or the rich content editor button, you'll see what color that is when I scroll up. You'll see this, it's kind of this dull green. I want it to match the aqua so that it pops. Um, so I'm just going to change that actually. Do I have a color picker here? Color picker eyedropper. So it is right there. I'm going to pick that color. I'm going to highlight that and copy it. So I just have a Chrome extension that allows me to pick a color off a page and I get the, the uh, six digit um, code for that. I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to go HTML editor. I'm going to go into the background color of that now we can see i've changed the color of the banner but our white text doesn't have enough contrast so i'm just going to go back and make that black so the the style for that is zero 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 six zeros let me change that back that didn't do it that was the wrong place let me change this to black now you can see that the text on the banner is um, is all black, so there's enough contrast. So I'm just going to do space. 
I'm gonna go return, period, return, period. So I have a couple spaces clearly defined under here so I can just kind of backspace over these. I do that so the HTML gives me room when I return to the rich text editor to type underneath the banner. So I'll say, um, um, from the reading, add a another point of view about the American dream. I'll just say, identify another point of view about the American dream that might fit into the third thought bubble here. So I'm not having them use their Bitmoji or anything. I just have the three Bitmojis. There's two thoughts and it's like, what's the third person gonna say? And so I'm controlling this or guiding this more, giving them some thoughts to respond to. I could have all three be blank and say, what's the conversation these characters are having after the reading? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can structure it, but basically you use the social situation, you use the background, use the context to show people talking about the topic, and then ask the students to contribute theirs. And I always say, um, please respond with at least, and I identify a certain number of sentences. I'm just gonna say three uh, for this ease, um, for this example, three sentences, and reply to two of your classmates' posts. All right, now I'm just gonna look down here. I'm not gonna have any attachments. I'm gonna allow threaded uh, re uh, replies, but I'm gonna also check users must post before seeing replies so they can't read what other people wrote and then uh, use that. They have to respond on their own and then they get access to what everybody else wrote. And then I'm gonna say this is graded. I'm gonna allow people to like. And then um, I'm gonna say points possible, just 10. Uh, for default and then I'm gonna sign it to everyone and I'm gonna save and publish. So what the students will see when they go to this discussion board is there's a conversation happening in a social uh, situation. They're on the city streets. What is the American dream? One character says uh, a certain point of view and then there's a blank thought bubble and it says from the reading identify another point of view about the American dream that might fit into a third thought bubble here. Please respond with at least three sentences and reply to two of your classmates posts and that's it. That's how you use a Bitmoji classroom setting to enhance a, uh, a discussion board in Canvas. All right, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. Let us know if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, how would you tweak or modify this discussion board with the Bitmoji Classroom? There's more than one way to do this, and this is just to give you some food for thought. Leave a comment below saying if you've used this before, and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned, we'll have more videos coming out your way.